Now the next experiment is shear test on mild steel bar. To carry out the shear test, we are having this as a mild steel bar, then the shear assembly which is having this as a shear plate and inside the shear plate another term which is called as bush. So these are the three bushes right now in front of you you will be finding one is inside this top portion of the shear test and two are the things two are the bushes which you will be finding rightly there at the compressive part of the shear assembly. So this is how these three bushes are there which are to be used then the shear assembly with the bottom portion and the top portion and vernier caliper to measure the diameter of the mild steel bar as we have already done it for the tension stage. So this is how the diameter of bar is measured with the help of the vernier caliper. This is the bar which is of a 10 mm diameter bar in front of you. Again the test is to be carried out with the help of universal testing machine. So as you are aware the nature of a universal testing machine rightly there in front of you. Now what is shear stress? It is just shear load divided by the cross sectional area. Shear load the load which is in the plane of the particular metal or the bar or the specimen. So you are going to apply the force in the plane of the bar and accordingly you are going to check its shear strength that is the, the shear load divided by the cross sectional area. So this is how if this is a bar if you apply the shear force as a tangential force to the plane or in the direction of the force the force which is acting on the plane in the direction. So this is how it is going to cut it into the two parts and these two parts are nothing but called as a shear failure. So this is how the shear failure of the bar you are going to create over here. How you will be creating this shear failure? There are two options to conduct this test. One is uh, this uh, single shear and another one is double shear. So now there are two options as we have discussed single shear and double shear. So this assembly is to be first of all fixed for the single shear. How it is to be fixed for the single shear is let us fix the bush from one of the end and uh, this is your compressive assembly at that is the bottom part the tension assembly over here and go on fixing it in this fashion. Insert your bar we are having 10 mm diameter bar which is to be inserted into the 12 mm diameter bush over here into the shear assembly. So this is how the setup is for single shear. Single shear indicate that this is the single area as a failure plane. This bar is going to cut over here only for this particular plane only. Accordingly it is called as a single shear, single plane of failure. If you apply one more bush from another side then the assembly will be called as double shear assembly. So this is how right now in front of you double shear assembly is there. You fix the bush completely into the shear assembly. Now this bar is going to cut in two plane that is one is at here already we have marked a line. The second plane of failure will be this one. So there are two planes of failure which is called as a double shear. Now in single shear this bar is going to cut in one part only. So this is for the single shear only one failure plane is there accordingly bar will get cut into the two portion. If you see for the double shear failure there are two failure planes are here accordingly two areas are under the concern thereby this bar will get cut into the three part that is one second will remains over here and third part will be at here. When the bar is going to cut in two part it is called as single shear. When the bar is going to cut in three part it is called as a double shear. When only one area is under the failure plane then it is a single shear. When there are two failure planes simultaneously then it is called as double shear failure. First test type let us click on single shear test as we have made assembly for the single shear specimen we have 
round specimen right now as my steel round bar is taken into the consideration test data so let us work out on the test data serial number we will change number 17 then original gauge length is uh, this is 10 mm diameter bar so this is gauge length as a 50 final gauge length we are not knowing in fact this is not needed also and then you worked out the several parameter over here next is units or unit are kilonewton and millimeter accordingly the stress in newton per mm square then we will go for online accordingly we will be finding that now the machine is ready to do the shear test so we will on the machine close both the wall and on this machine after making the machine on then go on loosening the second wall that is the right hand side wall so that you can apply the load on the machine and you will be finding that load on the machine is been getting applied before the load is getting applied first of all you have to make zero load and zero displacement so go on making the zero load and zero displacement and then you go online so this is how the shear test is been started so the load is getting increased and accordingly you will be finding that displacement is also getting varied over here so this is how load and displacement are now getting increased in front of you for the single shear you will be finding the assembly for the single shear there only two big bush are being used one is to the bottom assembly and the second one is to the top assembly and with the two bush two failure planes are being used uh, in fact one failure plane is being created and accordingly single failure plane is going to give you a single shear it is there in front of you so now this specimen is been cut into the two part you will be finding if you open the assembly you will find that the specimen is been cut into the two parts so these are the two parts from which it is been uh, cut over here so accordingly single failure plane is there so this bar was inserted with the two bush accordingly one failure plane was there and specimen cut into the two part the load is taken from the universal testing machine the load at which the specimen fails divided by the cross section area the area of the bar you are already knowing as you have found out its diameter so load upon area will gives you the shear stress for the single shear now we will go for double shear test so apply two bush from two sides and the middle portion is also having one bush so these are the three bush of 12 mm diameter bar and accordingly you are testing over here the next specimen for the double shear test so this is how in front of you the double shear test specimen are there and for this double shear test specimen we have created over here two failure planes so accordingly this bar is going to cut into one two and three parts so let us test this particular bar for the double shear test for double shear test you are applying the load and accordingly you are concentrating on to the shear assembly also so three bushes are there accordingly two failure planes are there so if two failure planes are there it means this bar is going to get cut into the three parts when bar is getting cut into the three parts two failure planes are there so two areas are there under the consideration this is how the load you are applying on the bar and on the universal testing machine you are just going to note the final load which is going to be occurs while testing the bar after removing the specimen you will be finding that this bar is getting cut into the three parts this was the first failure plane this is the second failure plane so first area and second area for single shear you use the formula p by a whereas for double shear you use the formula p divided by 2a p by a for single shear is giving you single shear stress whereas in double shear stress 
P divided by 2A is going to give you the value of a double shear stress. So P is there in front of you. So note down the P from the universal testing machine. Whereas A, that is the area as you know from the vernier, you have found out the diameter, and accordingly from the diameter you are working out the area of the bar. In the conclusion, you have to first of all find out the value of a double shear divided by single shear. Uh, load and accordingly the ratio of double shear to single shear should not exceed 2 and if you find the value it is coming less than 2 due to the losses which are generating due, during the experimental work. So, this is all about the single and double shear test.